So did you come out of the scrimmages feeling like you're ready to go or come out wishing you had more time? To I, you always want more time as a coach, but uh, I felt better after scrimmage too. It's, it's just like in football. From week one to week two is the greatest room for improvement. you got to improve from week one to week two, and we needed to from our first scrimmage, second scrimmage. That first scrimmage, we must have gone off sides three times, too many men on the field a couple times, made some uncharacteristic mistakes mentally. But then you sit back as a coach and remind yourself, we lost 18 men. We lost a lot of institutional knowledge from this organization last year. Um, and so from week one to week two, from the Navy scrimmage to the Penn scrimmage, we grew and learned a lot. Most important to me was, was really grit and toughness. Now granted, we all expect the, the men and women who commit to you know, serving our country are gonna be tough and gritty, and they certainly were, that first scrimmage against Navy. So I was really happy that we borrowed some of those traits and exhibited that on Saturday against Penn. You said you lost 18 guys. You do still have a lot of veterans here, but yeah. some new faces on the program. You know, how is everybody kind of mixing together? It's the camaraderie couldn't be better. It's one of the best we've ever had in, in my eight years here. Um, in terms of when they, that word culture, it's really, really tight. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of men. You know, wondering what's it going to be like the faceoff acts. What's uh, what are we going to look like defensively with Sawstad and, and Matt Sui and Bauer gone? So there's there's a lot of question marks. Uh, but the the intensity of the unification, how much how strong these guys have come together. Uh, it sounds like coach speak, but this this one's been unique. It's special. Um, yeah, but we just got to make up for some lack of experience in some key spots, don't we? How difficult is this season opener, and how much better is Michigan now than they were a year ago? Yeah, this is this is a big boy game. This is like whoever wins this game on Saturday has earned a big time victory, has 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 a statement victory. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, when we scheduled this a couple of years ago, this wasn't the thinking. Uh, but give Coach Conry and his men uh, tremendous credit going to the quarterfinals last year and doing really well in the transfer portal. So not only have they developed players, but they've supplemented really well. So. Um, yeah, two teams that were in Albany last year playing for the Final Four, you know, getting off in the first, the opening game of the 2024 season. This is a, this is a big timer. Virginia and Notre Dame, the last regular season game. Was that a good spot for that game to come? You have no control over the schedule. Is, is that a good spot for Virginia and Notre Dame to play, last regular season game? Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I, that could fluctuate. The ACC, who knows what they do. But, uh, but certainly, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, um, you know, it's, it's always interesting as a coach. Do you, do you want those preparation games? Do you want those games where you feel like you could make a bunch of mistakes and still win? Or do you want to open up with Michigan, where every mistake is exposed? Well, this is what we've, uh, this is what we've accepted. And, um, and we're, uh, I'm thrilled about it because, bottom line, when you get recruited to come to play for us, Kip Turner, Kevin sees myself, this is what we promote. You came here to play big time games. You came here for this pressure. Uh, you came for the, to, to play in one of the most difficult schedules in the country, and we kick it off right in high, high fashion. What did the two scrimmages reveal to you that, that you liked about this team? Certainly the second scrimmage showed me that we can be intense and, and tough and, and, and not be pushed around like we saw in the Navy scrimmage. Um, the the uh, understanding of the schemes, I think there's, there's a, a real level of high Q a high level of IQ here in terms of understanding what we're doing defensively and offensively, despite having had some graduation. So I'm, I'm really content at this point for early February, knowing that the scheme comprehension is where it is, despite the graduations. Um, I, I, and I don't want to beat it to death, but there really is a tightness and a unity with this team. Look, look I've had some teams that weren't that tight, and we still won a lot of lacrosse games. Um, it's, it's really enjoyable, uh, the, the crew uh, that believe in each other and supporting each other. And, and give the three captains, Mitch Whalen, Connor Schellenberger, Cole Caster, credit. That was their objective. When we talked this summer, especially in, October, in August, when we really defined the season's goals, that was really, really high on their list. And it's as tight as ever. Lars, uh, Sonia was out here before you and talked. The women open Friday, then play again Sunday. How much have you inter have your staff interacted with her staff? And what's that dynamic been like? Yeah, it's been wonderful. I mean, I, I miss Julie Myers personally, and she's been amazing to me. And obviously this university as a player and as a coach. Um, but, but Sonia, Mike, their staff, man, they, they've got great energy, great juice. They want this thing so bad. They've been fabulous for us. Um, I'm going to wait. Exactly. Um, they've, there's a uh, 
there's a renewed commitment and a juice around the women's lacrosse program that's fun to witness and see. And I'm uh, I'm really enjoying to get to know Mike and, and Sonia and the rest of the crew. Um, what fabulous people! We're really fortunate. Carla hired them. As good as Schellenberger has been, yeah. what kind of expectations do you have for him? Even what? higher. Uh, Connor's not been 100% healthy the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. um, 21 his first year. Um, I think we're back to that form. Now, his brain and his intelligence has still allowed him to score 80 points a season, um, but he is healthy, as healthy as we've seen. And so it's really exciting, that, and he's ready to take it to a, a different level this year. How much, how much are you relying on your captains, including Schellenberger? Yeah, the captains, there's, there's always a lot of pressure on them, but I, I really you know, want them with their voice, their emotional. We ask a lot of our captains, you know, leading by example is just like the baseline requisite. You've got to go out there and you've got to guide and lead men. You've got to be confrontational sometimes. Um, not only lead with the care, but lead that whip sometimes with your teammates, with your classmates. Um, so I, I, I lean a lot on them. And so far, they've been fantastic. Mitch Whalen, um, he's playing a critical role for us. Doesn't play as much on the field, number 43. He'll throw his body around, die for balls, and make, make those tough plays. But I need him to be that gritty dude that Dave Smith, Grayson Saladay, John Fox did, when the, someone who would speak truth to power. So I, I'm really happy with our captain so far. At the faceoff spot, a lot of options, obviously, uh, between those four guys. Yeah. Uh, do you have any understanding of a depth chart, and <laughs> might it play out sort of by committee? How do you see that? It's that that is the most tenuous depth chart we have, isn't it? You know, the the attack is pretty obvious. Who's up at the top there? And defense with Cole Kastner and. But when you look at the faceoff facts, you know, really unproven uh, across the board. It's certainly unproven at the ACC because Anthony Gobriel and Thomas Colucci have been played a lot of minutes for Navy and Colgate respectively, but this is new for them. So Coach Cassis and Coach Turner, who monitor the faceoff facts, they've got a lot of options, but yeah, there's a lot of question marks there too. So Gable Braun, Colucci, Gobriel, um, and even D'Souza, you know, he, uh, he gives us some, he, he's done some nice things up at Binghamton. So... Yeah, I, uh, we, we, we got a lot to grow and learn from there, that's for sure. Not to over-romanticize it, but every year is another chance to add to the legacy of this program, add another chapter. Yeah. Is it, is, from your perspective, is that exciting to see, all right, let's see what these guys can do this year now? Yeah, I mean, it's always, it's wonderful. It's, you, 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 you idolize the history and the past and the tradition that we stand upon, the, the, the shoulders of giants. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's us. This is our time. This is now. It's our time to write this chapter and, uh, and see if we can be the next step in that foundation and the next step of the building of this incredible program, incredible tradition that we get to be a part of. Um, yeah, it, and it's interesting because I've never lost 18 guys before. But we have, you know, a lot returning. And so there's a balance of, you know, new people fighting for starting spots, especially that face-off X. And yet, uh, incredible talent and depth when you look at our offense. We've got time for one more. There's a lot of hype around Jack Boyd, and obviously, yeah. uh, what have you seen? What does he bring? And then also, I know he played uh, offensive midi and attack at Tufts. Where do you see him sort of fitting in here? Yeah, he brings a creativity. He, he's uh, his ability to see the next pass, see the next play, see the open man, even if no one else sees it, because sometimes it is a turnover. Um, it, it's it's phenomenal. It's really fun to watch. And he's from a system where it was wide open. They really didn't worry about turnovers. We don't worry about turnovers to an extent. Um, he'll be an offensive midi for us to start the year, but he's phenomenal on, uh, on attack as well, finishing off transition. So he's, uh, what a great guy. Everyone loves him. Um, we'd love to have him for another year. The Division Three, everyone who played in 21 gets that year back. An interesting ruling by the Division Three body. Um, and all of his teammates hope he comes back. Uh, we'll see if he wants to do another year of education and master's degree work. But he's, um, he's fitting in incredibly well culturally. And his, his ingenious type of feeding and shooting, um, it's really captivating. Everyone, everyone's enjoying playing with him.